everyone, it's Tyler Putnam at the Museum of the American Revolution. I'm really excited to welcome you into my kitchen, take you into the Museum of the American Revolution to explore the history of Posset, a drink that you may not have heard of, but that was really popular in the colonial era in early America. So I'm joined today by my colleague and friend, Mark Turdo, who's actually in the museum. Mark, can you tell us where you are and what you do at the Museum of the American Revolution? Thanks, Tyler. I'm Mark Turdo, Curator of Collections and Special Projects here at the museum. I'm currently in the Tavern in Revolution Place, and uh, it's a good place to talk about what we're going to show you today. Uh, right before we built the museum, we actually did a couple of seasons of archaeological work, and we found 85,000 objects here on site. Among them, in a privy that was actually associated possibly with a tavern, possibly with some, some local domestic residences, we found 41 posset cups. And a posset cup generally looks like this. It's often yellowware with these brown dots or brown decoration, probably English made. Uh, they tend to be bulbous bodied, double handled. Uh, and you find them in archeological sites up and down the East Coast, not just here in Philadelphia, not just here at our site. They're really common. This is not the only style of posset cup that existed in the period. On the table in front of me, I have uh, a few others that we found here from the archeological dig, and they come in sort of a variation of styles. They're all yellow glazed, but you'll also see brown decoration. Sometimes it's just dots and lines. Uh, and the few here in the front, you'll see that actually the primary color you're seeing is brown with yellow highlights. Uh, and you can see that in the three in front here on the table. And then here in the center of the table is actually sort of a triple size posset cup. This one is bigger by far than all the others that we found. And it's possible that this one was the one for the party, the one that you made for the group and passed around and everybody enjoyed it. Mark, I think it's amazing that we found over 40 of these posset cups and yet most people today will have no idea what posset was or why it would have been uh, consumed right. in a tavern. So what do we know about posset as a, a drink? So posset today has sort of a reputation for being a medicinal drink, although in the period it was also considered a, a drink for special events, a drink you might have at night. Um, it's, it's a blend of milk and an alcohol. That alcohol could be a wine, which they would have used, uh, they would have used one known as sack. Uh, it might have been brandy, it might have been ale. And you actually sweeten this, you spice, you spice it up, you add spices, maybe nutmeg uh, to it you heat all of it and then blend it together and it separates so that you get sort of a creamy frothy top and then a spiced sweetened alcoholic drink below. Mark, do we know why it was so popular in the 18th century but seems to have fallen out of favor? Was it replaced? Did taste change? This seems when we describe it like something that maybe sounds a little bit like eggnog but might be kind of repulsive sounding. Why aren't we still drinking posset today? So posset does sound disgusting to us today. Uh, and in fact, if you talk to people who research historic foodways, some of them will actually say like, I've never made it, it doesn't sound interesting. Who wants to drink curdled milk? Uh, but what's interesting is in the period, it's, it was popular, it was common in some ways because it seemed nourishing. It was cheerful, cheering in some ways, especially if you add ale or sack to it. Um, but I think the reason it fell out of fashion, it fell out of favor, is literally it became less fashionable, it became less appealing. Um, our drink culture moved away from these kinds of blended drinks, especially drinks with milk. In fact, really the only thing that I can think of today, and I think you've already mentioned it, is eggnog. Uh, really, that's the closest thing we have to this, and we treat that as very much a seasonal drink. That's not something we enjoy year round. Mark, I wanted to ask you about another piece of material culture, an object from the past, as far as I know, we didn't find any of these on the museum's archaeological site, but I have a replica here. It's called a posset pot, and it has that same kind of bulbous shape, two handles, a lid that comes off, and it's got a spout. And we see these, uh, they survive in museums, decorative arts collections, but how would I have used this posset pot? Do I, do I drink out of the spout? Why is the spout coming out of the bottom? What, what's this thing about? So you, you definitely use that as both the container for posset and your drinking vessel for posset. And that seems strange to us because we think of a pot as something you pour from into another vessel and that's what you drink from. But just like the posset cups that we found here on site, you'll hold it by both handles. So one handle in each hand, 
you'll probably have to balance that uh, lid with your thumbs. And then you, you raise it to your mouth and drink from the spout. And one of the ideas when this was you could drink the alcoholic base level. And then as you drink that down, or as you, as you, as you consume it and go along, you can lift the lid up and spoon out that cream. So you can enjoy both levels of it almost simultaneously. So cool. It is. Well, Mark, uh, I know that you've made posset at your house before we filmed this. And uh, here at the Museum of the American Revolution Experimental Station, my kitchen, I'm actually making posset right now. So I'm making what we've discovered is called a brandy posset. So it involves eating cream with a little bit of sugar and cinnamon, some egg yolks, a recipe from 1778. It's been over what they would have called a low fire or a low burner. And I've created something that kind of looks uh, like a thin custard. So um, if you've ever had frozen custard, that's a frozen kind of egg and cream mixture. It's a little thicker than cream. And the next steps that we're going to do is to combine it, pour it into a bowl, mix it with a glass of brandy, give it a stir and taste it. I've got my nice little posset cup, kind of a miniature version of the ones that Mark was talking about. And I'll pour a nice ladle full of our fresh posset into that cup. And let's see how it smells first. It's uh, Definitely eggy, alcoholic. It's kind of like a seasonal pumpkin spice quality, maybe for the cinnamon and nutmeg that went into this recipe. See how it tastes. Huh, that is actually uh, much better than I expected. It has a, a Thickness of viscosity, kind of like eggnog. It's it's warm, kind of uh, wholesome. Not definitely not overly spiced. Not overly sweet. That is nowhere near as disgusting as I thought. Uh, Mark, you made ale posset recently. What was your experience with that version? I, I did make ale posset from uh, I think the same book that you made the the brandy posset from. And I had a similar reaction overall that it was nowhere near as gross as people told me. In fact, I didn't think it was gross at all. Uh, what I did was blend together milk. Uh, you actually grind a little bread, a little white bread into that. You heat the milk, you heat ale with nutmeg and sugar, then you blend the two together. And I actually found it was kind of bland but filling. I didn't find it was overly spicy. Maybe that's because I didn't put enough nutmeg in. But I, I thought it was actually pretty good. I could see little ways to tweak it to make it better. But I didn't find that it was drinking, people often say it's like drinking uh, uh, bad milk. It's not, not at all. It's got a creaminess to it. I found the ale posset, to me, felt in mouthfeel, felt like a, a thin hot chocolate and had a similar taste. And then when it went down, you got the ale and the nutmeg really well. But I think, I think Posset gets a bad rap. I don't think it's that bad. Well, I'm glad we were able to take a look inside the museum's collection, study these amazing artifacts from our archaeological site. And uh, together, Mark, you and I, I think we might have redeemed Posset. So I hope everyone here gets a chance to give this a taste test at home. And let us know what you think. Keep an eye out for more programs and interesting projects here at the museum.